Let's see how it's done. Recording a general ledger journal entry into Dynamics GP is perhaps the most fundamental basic type of transaction you can enter into the system. In the financial module under transactions, in financial we go to general to open up the transaction entry window. Your next journal entry will automatically increment. In the batch ID field, you typically want to enter in a batch name and you can use any name you want, but be consistent. We're going to put in demo2 here and when we press tab to uh, move out of the field, the system knows this is a new batch and you're prompted to add it. Just click on add. Normally you would just leave this page as it is, but if you're entering a journal that is to be recurring, you want to ensure you change the frequency of the entry. This is generally used for entries that need to be posted again on subsequent dates. Often monthly entries used for payroll, accruals, prepaids, etc. that repeat specific times. For our demonstration, we'll click on our single use and just click save. The transaction type is normally set to standard, but it's a great feature to be able to click on reversing, if this is a reversing entry. And to simply specify a reversing date. The beauty of this is when you post this single transaction, the system will automatic, automatically create another journal entry which reverses this transaction on the date you specified in the reversing date. And it will post that as well, so you get sort of two for one journal entry, which is an efficient way of doing reversing entries. This type of transaction is frequently used for month end entries such as a payroll accrual, where the hours are worked the last week of the month, but they'll be paid in the first week of the following month. Let's go back to our standard entry. In the reference field, you can put a header description of what the journal entry is about. It's an adjusting entry, and press tab through down to the journal, or sorry, the ledger account field. Let's add some accounts to the entry. You'll notice on the right hand side, there's the hide show button to hide or show the distribution reference description that is specific to that code. If we want to look up an account, you can press Control L or you can press the browse icon here. In my case, I'm sorting by description, so I'm going to just um, put in part of the description to search for. So I'm looking for a vehicle, we'll pick vehicle insurance. Enter in the amount of your adjustment and then you can put a short description about uh, what your um, entry was about. So this is specific to this GL code. Press tab to go to the next GL code. And this time we're going to put, we're going to look up again. And we'll pick one of the RM accounts. And we're going to credit that account. The system will allow you to post an entry that's out of balance or prepare an entry, sorry, that's out of balance. It will never let you post it. But if it is out of balance, you'll be, have to save it and then come back to it before you can post it. So read class amount, and we're going to save our batch. So I'm going to go back into our general transaction entry and point out a few other things at the top of this window. So what you'll notice is there's an Excel paste window. So you can actually create a journal entry a standard journal entry and this is um, maybe in this case it's a payroll entry and you can take it from your little Excel spreadsheet, make sure that the spreadsheet's set up correctly. We can copy, oops, just the data, just the data. And then you can paste it with, the, make sure you're in the journal entry field and paste it with Excel. So now pasted those entries in for me 
and I can save that batch as it is. On the next one we can copy. So we can actually copy a journal entry. So this feature allows the user to copy a previously posted journal entry. It could be useful in situations where um, in a pinch where there's a lengthy entry to be copied. So if you were in need of copying multiple transactions on a regular basis, you could do this or you could look at um, recurring entries, but most likely you do this for a one-off. So if you click on the copy button, it asks you what's the original journal entry year. So you may want to copy something from a previous year. And what's your original journal entry? So generally you'd know what the journal entry is, but if you didn't know what the journal entry is, you can go search for one. So we'll choose this one and say okay. And if it's copied that journal entry, you can make adjustments to it any way you'd like to. Um, put in a reference of of um, repeat or whatever you'd like that reference to be and you can save it. The next one is um, back out or correct a journal entry. So the correct button will actually do two things. There's two parts to this one. It'll back out. So if we do a correction, it asks you if you want to back out a journal entry or do you want to back out a journal entry and create the cor correcting entry. So one simply reverses a mistake, the other one will reverse the mistake and allow you to create a new journal entry that you can then edit. So again, you say what was the journal entry? I'm going to create one actually where it has the correcting entry just so I can show you that. The original journal entry, um, I'm just going to go to the end just by selecting end and these ones are coming from the subledgers, so not necessarily do you want to do those ones. Maybe we'll pick on this one and say OK. So now this is my backout entry, so it's reversed the transactions from that particular entry, and it's in a status of unposted backout. So you can save that. And then the next journal entry is the correct correction of the journal entry. So you can actually make the corrections in here and then save that journal entry for posting later. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the clearing transaction window. Under Transactions, Financial, and Clearing, the clearing transaction entry opens. You use this particular functionality to clear the balance of an account. It's useful when an account is not used and the balance in that account needs to be moved to another account. If the account is obsolete and can't be deleted because it has a balance that would normally show up on the financial statements, the account balance can be moved and thus then the account can be made inactive so that it can't be used again. An example of a clearing entry might be a transaction to clear an expense for a promotion event. If the event is finished but a balance remains in the account, the balance can be transferred to another account. In this window, the journal entry increments, you can enter the transaction date, the source document defaults, and you can enter a reference. I'm going to enter a reference. You can then make a choice of whether you're moving the year to date balance or just the balance of a specific period. Enter in your accounts. So this is the balance, the account that you're moving the balance from, and this is the account you're moving the balance to. You notice, unlike the other journal entries, you don't have to worry about what the balance is. The system will automatically move the full balance. When you click on Post, it's automatically posted through to the general ledger. All right, let's finish up with some queries in the general ledger. So if we look at our inquiry window, which I'll bring over to the left, and we look at our summary inquiry, I'm going to pick on oh, this account. And we haven't had any transactions in this financial year, but we had some transactions in this financial year. 
So if we click on that period, and we can click on any one of these headers, doesn't matter which one, we'll get the same window come up. We'll just click on debit, and it brings up our detail inquiry window. So with the detail inquiries, it affords you the flexibility to actually be more selective of dates, source documents, currency ID, if you were to bring up that detail inquiry by itself, which was just here. Um, we're going to look at this journal entry though. And in order to drill into the details, I click on journal entry. So here's again information about the journal entry. The source was the um, payables transaction. And if we want to look at the source details, we click on the source document. So here's our invoice when it was posted. If there was notes against the invoice, we would see them. The document date, um, posting date versus document date. And in the bottom here, we can look at our distribution. So what were the other accounts that were affected by that entry? We could click on apply details and see when it was post, sorry, paid. Um, and what was applied to it. Okay, and we'll close out of that window and all these windows, so lots of drill throughs to <clears throat> give you information about a transaction. The other thing we could look at is our journal entry inquiry. So if I look at journal entry 3536, this particular journal entry had a back out entry, so it was backed out by journal entry 3548 and corrected by 3549. So we imported these entries. We may have had an error in there, so there's the back out entry. So you can always click on your uh, backed out by, so the hyperlink there, to see the entry made out to back it out, or the corrected by, and then see what the corrections were. And then of course we always have our handy dandy little smart list. So we're gonna go into financial and we're gonna look at account transactions in this case. So you all have probably seen this before and you probably use it. I just created this little demo one just for demonstration purposes. And I'll pick on this purchasing account, or sorry, the freight and handling account that came from accounts payable. If I double click on this, now I'm taken down to my transaction entry zoom. So this looks like the detail, um, the results from the detail transaction entry. Click on the source document and the same details that I showed you previously. So lots of ways to drill back and through and, and figure out where entries came from and what they were all about. During today's webinar, we showed that there's more to general ledger journal entries than meets the eye. You can create recurring or reversing entries, copy paste from Excel to GL distributions, copy one G journal entry to another, clear account balances, and perform different queries to get information and drill back to transactions.